cowpokes. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Let's discuss another lesser known and much maligned Marvel movie from the mind of director Mark Steven Johnson. No, not that. I'm talking about that blazing biker, that Texan Titan, the spirit of vengeance himself, Ghost Rider. Released in 2007, Ghost Rider is the tale of the titular character and his battle against Blackheart, the devil's son who seeks a bounty of a thousand souls and the hell on earth which follows. Receiving decidedly negative reviews, could this movie be a spirit of redemption or is it hell on earth? There's only one way to find out, so say your prayers and rev your engines as we dive into the depths of darkness with the spirit of vengeance himself, Ghost Rider. I give you the magnificent blaze boys. Papa Barton's got the cancer. Son Johnny would do anything to save his old man. And speak of the devil. This is Mephistopheles, who is actually the devil himself in this movie. In the comics, it's been backed and forth as to whether or not Mephisto is the actual devil. But he is the guy who took Spider-Man's marriage. But one should never make a deal with him. Because oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for Barton Blaze. Alright, that's enough of that then. Onward! Cut to 21 years later and Johnny Blaze takes the bike stunt show to new levels. Easy enough when you've got the luck of the devil. Heck, is the bike okay? That's the code of the bold, folks. Bones heal, scars make for stories, and tales of bravery sure do impress. Hell, why do you think I keep bringing up me old war stories? The next day, a friendly face appears. This is Roxanne Simpson, Johnny's old flame. They were going to run away that day, because her father had decided that she was too good for him. But then, well, devil's due, Barton Blaze goes and falls into the ring of fire, and, uh, well, Johnny's life takes a different path. Two old lovers are reunited. Which makes this the perfect moment for the devil to call in Blaze's contract. Find the one known as Blackheart and destroy him. And despite his protest, I'm not doing it. Johnny Blaze becomes the new Ghost Rider and sets to work, demolishing the first of Blackheart's henchmen. Now, Blackheart's henchmen for this movie are called The Hidden, and they actually do exist in the comics, but not in this form. They've been Hollywoodized somewhat. And I know that elementals are somewhat played out, but hey, I'll allow it for now. The next morning, Blaze is found at his father's grave by the last rider, one Carter Slade. And after a patch-up of exposition, Johnny spends that evening trying to control his rider powers. And explain all the craziness to Roxanne, which goes about as well as you'd expect. I saw my soul of the devil. Actually, that's not as crazy as you might think. I mean, I've heard stories and all. Though I still think that Homer Simpson should have bartered down Devil Flanders to something more reasonable. I mean, your entire soul for a donut! <sighs> there is no donut. In this or any other And worse, the police have it in their heads that Johnny was responsible for Blackheart's reign of destruction. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned that Blackheart killed a bunch of people at the Roadhouse Bar where his henchmen turned up. 
and one guy at the train siding's yard, where the ghost rider first faced him down. So when our hero has nothing to confess, they stick him in a tank. Which doesn't bode well for the rest of the riffraff. You innocent. And when Blackheart sets another of his henchmen, the rider dispatches him in short order. But the police are less than impressed. Pity gunfire doesn't seem to do the trick. These Americans and their guns, eh? You'd think they'd learn. The next morning, Carter Slade comes clean. You see, Carter Slade was a Texas Ranger. A man of honour by all accounts. Until one day, he got greedy. And one thing led to another, and he found himself sentenced to hang. Then along came the devil, with an offer. He would free Carter Slade from the shadow of the gallows, in exchange for his service. And so Carter Slade became the Ghost Rider, the Devil's Bounty Hunter. Until the fateful day that he was asked to collect the contract of Sun Venganza, a town that had torn itself apart in greed. The contract of San Venganza was for 1,000 souls. It was a very powerful contract. Too powerful, Carter Slade thought, to hand over to the devil. So he went into hiding from that day to this, to keep the contract of San Venganza out of the wrong hands. And now, the contract of San Venganza is all Blackheart needs to bring about hell on earth. Though personally, I think that sounds a bit iffy. Just a thousand souls to bring about hell on earth? And that night, Roxanne gets caught up. And our hero searches for the contract of San Venganza, which is hidden in the unlikeliest place. And so we ride for our final confrontation. Sadly, this is the last we shall see of Carter Slade, as he only had one last transformation left in him and he's used it to see the new Ghost Rider to San Venganza to end this madness. Blackheart sends his final henchman against the Rider, with predictable results. And so we roll into San Venganza, and the contract is exchanged. The son of Mephistopheles absorbs 1,000 wicked souls. I wonder what a Rider's penance stare could do with that. And the devil actually makes good on his deal, but Johnny Blaze is having none of it. I'm gonna own this curse. And so our movie ends with the Ghost Rider riding off to new adventures. So that was Ghost Rider. And you know what? Despite all the negative reviews, despite the critical mauling, I'm still going to put this one into my house of love. So let's start with the negatives. Yes, Blackheart isn't the morass of darkness he was in the comics. Yes, Carter Slade was effectively an entirely different shade of Ghost Rider. And yes, Nicolas Cage was playing Nicolas Cage, but with a Texan twang. But that's what this movie needed. Cage's blaze is every inch the disinterested daredevil. The man who's testing his luck simply because he can. And if I have to make one comparison with Daredevil here, it's in the choice of female lead. I very much prefer Ava Mendez's Roxanne Simpson over Jennifer Garner's Electra Nachos. But that's just my own opinion. And yes, Roxanne still gets kidnapped at the end of the movie, but she has a fair amount of agency beforehand, and she does do some research into what's actually going on. And of course, one could argue that Wes Bentley's Blackheart would stick out like a sore thumb were he to use the comic version's appearance. And while his accent does seem to slip slightly at times, and his voice is somewhat enhanced in post, it's not so overdone, at least in my opinion, as to spoil Bentley's performance. And we have to mention Sam Elliott's cowboy mentor, Carter Slade. Even if the script kinda hits you over the head with the fact that Slade was the one that stole the contract, and has been hiding out ever since. But his performance is at least everything it needs to be. Speaking of the plot, 
while it does have a good few exposition heavy moments, it manages to avoid Originitis simply by virtue of the basic premise being so light. Teen sells Sol to save his father, devil in the detail, contract called in down the line. And while it does take a fair few minutes to get going again after the prologue, and the character bits of Blaze's apparent love of monkey business and the carpenters seem to go nowhere, it does fill out its 110 minutes before credits. The thing that I think some people have missed though, is that this movie has the right feel. A mix of Western legend, American Christianity, and a darker shade of superheroics than the four colour world of the A-lister Avengers. This isn't all bad guys and bullets, aliens from the sky and spandex, but neither is it the claustrophobic personal feeling of an Ang Lee Hulk or a Daredevil, and it's fair to say that between them both, Cage and Bentley carry this movie, though more through Bentley being a base for the post-production guys at times. And yes, the occasional jump scares are annoying on first watch, but you get used to them after a while. Overall then, I know that Ghost Rider is no masterpiece. But I personally like this movie. It's one hell of a ride, and I would recommend it to any Nicolas Cage fans, or anyone who's looking for a different and darker shade of superhero movie. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, great entertainment, and reminding you to always negotiate infernal contracts. And for heaven's sake, read the small print! Ride free, cowpokes, you hear?